All right, we are now in chapter five, lesson three, and this one's called rates. So in our math book, we're open to page 206, and our learning target says, I can find rates, nice and short. So let's write that one in. All right, at the top of page 206, we've got some definitions of important vocab here. It says a rate is a ratio of two quantities using different units. Then it says a unit rate compares a quantity to one unit of another quantity. And then equivalent rates have the same unit rate. So lots of things to look at there. First thing let's break down here is our word and our learning target. Let's write down what a rate is. And rate, the word rate, is very similar to the word ratio because it is very similar. It said there that a rate is a ratio comparing two quantities with different labels. So we'll write a ratio comparing two quantities And in parentheses, I'm going to make this note that you're going to be comparing two different quantities, so they're going to have different labels. For example, I might be comparing the number of hours that I work for somebody to the amount of dollars that I make. So hours and dollars would be different labels. Then the next word in there is unit rate. Now the difference between a rate and a unit rate, this is still a rate, but when we're comparing two quantities with different labels, one of the quantities has to be a one. So we're gonna say it's a rate with one value being a one. So there has to be a one inside a rate in order for it to be a unit rate. And the way in parentheses I'm going to write this, the way that we figure out what a unit rate is, is we're going to use division. So that's what I'm going to put in the parentheses after that one. And then the last word there says equivalent rates. And we kind of already wrote that down earlier when we wrote down equivalent ratios. Remember the word equivalent just means equal to. So where equivalent rates would be rates that are equal to each other. So if you simplified one, you would get an equivalent rate. So now looking at those, we can move on to our first example. And since you guys can use calculators again in this chapter, this one should be fairly simple for you. For example one, it says writing a rate. The double number line shows the rate at which you earn points for successfully hitting notes in a music video game. Write a rate that represents the situation. So the first thing we'll write down is that we are looking at a double number line, which some of you may not have seen before. So we'll jot that down. This is a double number line and I'm going to underline it just in case on your test it asks you to create a double double number line this is what we're going to be making so you're basically going to have two lines kind of parallel to each other as best you can and then you're going to have labels on the top I'm going to skip lines on my labels and then labels on the bottom for the bottom number line. And the top is going to represent something and the bottom is going to represent something. In this particular case, the top is going to represent our points and the bottom is going to represent how many notes we're hitting in this video game. So on the top we have a zero, then it goes to 150, then it goes to 300, and you can see that it's going up by 150s every time. So we've got a 600, and then it's got a 750. Extend this out one more time. If you look at the bottom, it starts at zero notes, one note, two notes, three notes, and so this one is going up by ones. So this is what they've given us, and the question says, write a rate that represents the situation. Well, remember up here, a rate is a ratio comparing two quantities with different labels. 
well, these are two different labels and they want us to write any kind of rate we want. So we can basically pick any item on this number line. So I'm gonna circle this one. Let's make a rate for this position on the number line. If we make a rate for this, that would mean 600 points are being compared to four notes. So my rate would be 600 points for every four notes. And that is what a rate looks like, 600 points for every four notes. It is not a unit rate up here because one of the numbers has to be a one for it to be a unit rate. So this is just a regular rate. And we can move on to example two. And by the way, on that last one, we could have picked anything on that number line. You didn't have to pick the 600 and the four. You could have picked 450 and three, 302. Any of those could have been used when you're writing that rate. Example two says finding a unit rate. So now we're gonna switch this up and make sure that we're using a one. A piece of space junk travels five miles in eight seconds. How far does it travel per second? So space junk is what we're talking about here. So let's write that out. Not sure exactly what space junk is, but we'll go with it. It says space junk travels at five miles for every eight seconds. Seems to be quite fast. Think of five, how long five miles would be. Eight seconds has already traveled that fast. The question they're asking us to solve is how far does it travel per second? So we wanna know how many miles per second. So let's start by writing this rate out, five miles in eight seconds. So we can write this out actually kind of like a fraction, five miles over eight seconds. And remember that this fraction bar in math really is kind of like a division symbol. So if I wanted to take this and find a unit rate, I would divide. I'm gonna divide five by eight. So it's always top divided by bottom. So in my calculator, I'm going to put in five divided by eight, top divided by bottom. And that is going to give me how many miles per one second. So if I do five divided by eight on my calculator, I end up getting 0 0.625. So that means that this piece of space junk travels 0 0.625 miles in one second. We divided our rate to get a unit rate, and this is a unit rate because there's a one sitting here. One of your values has to be a one. And we're done with that one. So if we move on to some on your owns, look at page 207 at the top. You can pause and try numbers one, two, and three on your own. Okay, if you tried them out, number one is going to be 150 points per note. And that's just one example. You could have used other ones. Number two's answer is 186 miles. And number three is 50 cents or 0 0.50 to one ounce or for every one ounce. All right, moving on to example three. It says, a chef buys six pounds of salmon fillets for $51. How much will the chef pay for nine more pounds of salmon fillets? So let's jot out what they gave us. They tell us that six pounds of salmon costs $51. And the question says, how much will the chef pay for nine more pounds of salmon fillets? So I wanna know how much nine pounds of salmon will cost. So I'll put a question mark there. 
And this is question A for example three, by the way. There's two parts to this one. Well, let's do what we did last time. Let's take what they've given us, six pounds of salmon for every $51, and let's write that out as a fraction using a ratio line. So we have six pounds of salmon over $51. So remember, this fraction line really means division. So what I would do in my calculator is six pounds divided by $51 total, and that's gonna end up giving me, well, that's probably not the way we wanna do it actually, looking at it. I probably wanna switch these around, making my dollar amount on the top and my pounds on the bottom or this is gonna give me kind of a funky answer. So I'm gonna go back here. And sorry about the mistake, but let's go ahead and flip this around. So let's put our $51 on the top. Normally when you're dealing with the money and pounds or money and something else, you're gonna to wanna to put the money on the top. So kind of glad I made that mistake so I could remind you guys of that. So dollar goes on top and then our six pounds of salmon goes on the bottom. So now when I put this in my calculator, top divided by bottom, so this will be division still, $51 divided by six pounds, that's gonna give us something easier to work with. That ends up getting us, if you do that on your calculator, 8.5. And what that means is that's gonna be $8 and 50 cents for one pound. So we just found a unit rate, 850 for each pound of salmon, which is pretty pricey if you ask me, but salmon's good. We actually want nine pounds of that. So we have to take 850 and now we have to multiply it by nine. So on our calculator, we're gonna take $8.50 and multiply it by nine pounds of salmon and that's gonna end up getting us $76.50 for nine pounds of salmon. I carambas, that's expensive. Question B says, well now you buy two pounds of tilapia fillets for $16. What's the cost for seven pounds of tilapia fillets? This is a very similar question. So this time we have two pounds and this is just a different kind of fish. Tilapia fillets is gonna cost $16. And these numbers are a little easier to work with. We wanna know how much seven pounds cost. So let's set it up the same way. Let's put our dollars on the top. So let's do $16 over seven pounds. Again, remember that line means divide. So 16 divided by seven on our calculator. Oh, pardon me, I am doing this wrong. It's $16 for every two pounds. Good grief. Really making an awesome video here. So let's take that seven off. I was using different items. So it's $16 for two pounds of tilapia flays. So let's put a two underneath there instead of a seven. So now we're gonna divide. 16 divided by two, which gives us eight. So it's $8 for one pound. $8 for one pound. Now I can bring in my seven. So we're gonna take that $8 for one pound and multiply it by seven pounds, and that will end up getting us 56 total dollars for all of my tilapia fillets. At the bottom of page 207, you'll see another on your own. Go ahead and pause and try that one out. Okay, so for 4A, the question, um, or the answer, excuse me, is 45 megabytes. And for 4B, they want you to construct a double number line. Don't really have an, a way of showing you that, so just make sure you've made two little number lines and you've got your lines labeled as appropriate. For how many megabytes can you download in 10 seconds? So you need to have ended up having a 10 on your double number line with seven and a half megabytes as the final answer. And that brings us to the end of our video.